Hey y'all, this lesson is for quadratic functions if you're looking to find the vertex. And there's two or three ways that you can find the vertex, but I'm gonna show you two of them today. In the transformations of functions video, I ended on introducing vertex form. And so you'll see on this page, one of the examples that we did when we were transforming a quadratic function, we have the parent function on the left and the transformed function on the right. And I mentioned vertex form and I kind of went into it a little bit, but today we're going to be diving straight down into vertex form and finding the vertex when you don't have vertex form. So this is vertex form where we have this parentheses and then maybe something in front of it and then something added on to the end of, end of it. That's kind of ambiguous. I'll show you. Vertex form of a quadratic is a times x minus h squared plus k. So, and then you'll usually have an f of x equals in front of that. But we've got all these letters here. So what do these letters mean? The letters are, um, the X is always just X. We leave that as X. And then the A, H, and K are gonna be the numbers that are changing depending on your function. So the vertex in this form is H comma K. And then the axis of symmetry is X, equals h. Now the axis of symmetry is an imaginary line that cuts the quadratic function or the parabola exactly in half. So it's where the function is basically symmetric. So in this function up here from the previous example, we've got vertex form where a is 2, h is 2, and k is negative 1. And we'll go into this a little bit more, but I'm just trying to kind of show you a picture before we get into it. And we've got the vertex down here. The vertex is the point where uh, the function changes from, in this case, decreasing to increasing, or uh, we would call it a minimum in this case. And through the vertex is a an imaginary line called the axis of symmetry. And the equation for that axis of symmetry is x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. I'll show you. So the vertex represents either the maximum or minimum. point depending on the function and the function has a maximum when a is negative and then the function has a minimum when a is positive so if i go back up here to this example you can see a is a positive value so a positive A value makes a U-shaped graph, and a U-shaped graph has a minimum. If this had been negative 2, then we would have an upside down U, and it would have a maximum. So we can um, quickly sketch these graphs. We've got, I'm going to do an uh, coordinate plane, just kind of sketch it here. We've got our y-axis and our x-axis. And then we know that the parent function of x squared is a u-shaped graph. So negative x squared is going to flip it down. It's going to be upside down. It's kind of like a cup. And then we're going to flip that cup upside down. And I'm just sketching it. I don't have exact values, but Actually, I'm going to do this in a different color so you can actually see it. Go down like that. If you're unsure about how to do that, you can always do a table of values where you just pick a couple X values and then we're going to square them and make them negative. And so that's where 
these uh, negative y values come from. This negative outside of the x squared is what makes the y values negative. So you might also see this written as negative x squared like that. So we're squaring x first and then making it negative, which is what flips it. And then the graph of x squared is the positive y values. This is our parent function. And it's just going to be a u-shaped graph. Mine got a little off, but you get the point. And then if we did a table of values, we would have 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. I ran out of room, but we've already covered that. So I'm kind of going quickly. The axis of symmetry cuts the graph of the function directly in half. It is an imaginary vertical line of symmetry. We've already talked about this a little bit. I jumped ahead. I got excited. That goes directly through the vertex. A vertical line passes through the um, X coordinate of the vertex. And you can find the X coordinate of the vertex if, if the function is not already in vertex form then you can find it using this formula. So we have two different scenarios here. We have a scenario where the function is in vertex form, and then we have the scenario where the function is in standard form. And depending on which form is given to you, you can decide you know, which way you wanna find the vertex. Now, one of the ways I said I was gonna show you two, two of the three ways. The third way is by looking at a graph. So if you wanted to graph these, you could find it that way. I guess there's four ways because you could also look at a table of values. But I'm just going to show you more specifically, I'm going to show you the vertex form and the standard form. So when it is in vertex form, like in this example here, then we have, if we write out our vertex form, we have uh, a times x minus h squared plus k. And hopefully you can kind of see um, there's no a value, so it would be an understood one right here. But our vertex is h comma k. So we're using that we know, you know, we know that the vertex is h k, and we also know the generic form of vertex form, it's weird, um, but h and k line up with vertex form. But you might notice that our vertex form has minus h in it, and ours is a plus. So if I use some algebra skills to manipulate the equation a little bit, I can rewrite this as x minus negative 8 squared minus 4. And now we have it in our generic vertex form. And we can easily see that h is negative 8 and k is negative 4. So our vertex is negative 8, negative 4. And that's it. That's all at once. And then for the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry is an imaginary line that goes through the x coordinate of the vertex. So the x coordinate of the vertex is negative 8, which means that our axis of symmetry, zoom out, is a vertical line. So if we're going to describe the vertical line, we'll write it in a linear equation, x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. And if you'll remember from linear equations, this is an equation of a vertical line. So we would go to the x axis, draw a dotted line at x equals negative eight, and that would go through the vertex and it would cut our graph directly in half. So I could graph this in a calculator, graphing calculator. I'll just do it, I'll just show you. We have x 
plus eight, close the parentheses, squared minus four. And then if I graphed it, I'm gonna zoom out so we can get a better picture here. We can see, hmm, you can see the parabola and uh, at negative eight, negative four is where the vertex is. And if I drew an imaginary line through x equals negative eight, that's gonna cut the parabola directly in half, exactly in half, I guess I should say. That's a better word, exactly in half, not directly. I'm gonna change that up here exactly in half and then so that's done if the problem is asking you for the vertex and the axis of symmetry then that's all that's done that's all you have to do uh, if you're graphing a quadratic then you can use this to help you set up your table of values you'll notice up here that i kind of used zero as my center but I did that because I knew it was going to be the vertex. So if I had used these x values on this function, I'd only get one side of the graph. So this vertex is showing you kind of the middle, not kind of, it is the middle. And that middle is going to help you set up a table of values so you can figure out what your graph looks like. So if you were going to do a table of values for this function, you could find the vertex and then when you set up your table of values that's going to help you decide which x values you want to use so you could do negative 10 negative 9 negative 8 negative 7 negative 6 instead of these x values up here and then in this last example here we have the function in standard form we can get this in vertex form, but we haven't learned it yet, but we will very soon, which I love, it's so fun. Um, but if you don't wanna do that, or you don't know how to do it, then instead of getting it in vertex form, you can use this formula up here. Oops, wrong tool, there we go. Where the X coordinate of the vertex is found by negative B over two A. Now, what is B and A? Where are we getting B and 2A? What is that from? If you'll remember from standard form, standard form is AX squared plus BX plus C. So A is the number with X squared, B is the number with X, and C is the constant. In this case, A is 1, B is negative 2, and c is negative five now in our vertex formula we don't actually need c when we learn the quadratic formula you will need c but not in this case so we're going to focus on these two values the x coordinate of the vertex is found by negative b over 2a. Now, this is also the axis of symmetry, the equation for the line of the axis of symmetry. So we're finding two things at once, yay. <laughs> so we just plug in our values. We already found a and b from our standard form, and then we just plug it into the formula, negative b over 2a, then we simplify and we get one. So the X coordinate of the vertex is one, which is also the equation of the line for the axis of symmetry. Now we have the X coordinate of the vertex. It's a vertex is a point. So I need to find the y coordinate. If I have x, how can I find y with that? Hopefully you're thinking that you're gonna plug it in to the original equation, which is correct. 
So now we find the y coordinate of the vertex. We plug x into the equation. So we get y equals, our equation is x squared minus 2x minus 5. And then I am plugging in the x coordinate of the vertex to find the y coordinate. 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 5. And then we simplify. 1 squared is 1 minus 2 minus 5 is negative 6. Now we have our x coordinate and our y coordinate, which makes our vertex 1, negative 6, and our axis of symmetry, x equals 1. That's all. That's all at once. And if you are allowed to use a calculator, which in my class you are, if you have the x coordinate, then you can use your table of values feature in your calculator to find the y coordinate. So you don't have to go through this step. I would encourage you to at least do it a couple of times so that you know where it's coming from and you understand why it is that way. But uh, in the future, like if you're doing a test or you're trying to do something quickly that's timed, then you can use your calculator. So I will show you that. Uh, close that, go to y equals, I need to clear it. Oh, there we go. x squared minus 2x minus 5. I can graph it and see those values there, or I can go to second graph, and I've got a table of values. You can see at x equals 1, the y value is negative 6. And you'll also notice if you look at those y values, they go 3, negative 2, negative 5, negative 6. And then what happens? They start climbing back up. So that's where that U-shaped graph is coming from. So that's going to indicate when it, that minimum value, that negative 6, that's where it turns to go back up. That minimum right there is the vertex. Now, there's some cases where the vertex is a decimal, and your table of values is not going to show you that, but it will indicate um, about where it is. So you can kind of estimate that. And then if you're looking at the graph, you can use the calc feature to find the minimum. That's not it. Sorry, this calculator is a little different, so I get confused. Uh, trace, maybe? Yeah, mine's trace, but I think yours is second calc or second. I can't remember. I'll have to look. Um, so anyway, that's how you look at it on the calculator. And then this is how you do it by hand. In this case, since A is positive, this would be a minimum. And also in the first case, the first example, it would also be a minimum. And if X had been negative, then it would be a maximum. So that's all for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I would be happy to help. See y'all in the next one.